So today we are gonna do a nice little deep dive on frame rates. So this segment is actually just a chapter out of a full video course I just made and it just went live. So if this is the kind of stuff that you want to learn more about, it's a three hour course. So go check it out. It is more of a beginner's course, but we start all the way from the bare basics of how to dial in your phone all the way to shooting on a red camera on a Movi gimbal. So if setting up a camera is complicated to you, like what is a log profile? What is bit rate? What aperture should I be shooting at? Then definitely go check out that course. All right, so now we know what that 4K means. What's that 24? That is going to be our frame rate. So that 24 means 24 frames per second. Because when you're watching video, you're not actually looking at something that's moving. You're looking at a series of images, still images that move through and play through fast to where it looks like it's moving. Kind of like those flip books with a bunch of drawings in them and you go and you flip through them and it actually looks like that art is moving because you're viewing through them so quickly. So right now you're looking at 24 still images every single second. If this were one frame per second, this is what it would look like. It would look really, really terribly choppy. And let's go to four frames per second. That looks a little bit better. Now 12 frames per second, much, much better, but still a little bit rough. And this is 24 frames per second, which is what I'm currently shooting at. So there's different standards on where you live. The most common is NTSC and PAL standards. Now, if you live in a place that has PAL standards, then you're probably working with 25 frames per second. So easy. But I live in America, which uses the NTSC video standards, which gets a little bit trickier. The most common here is 24 or 30. It's a little bit complicated. I say 24 and 30, but really instead of 24, it's 23.976. And instead of 30, it's 29.97, which is kind of a weird decimal number to have as our standard in frame rates, right? And it's kind of a dumb reason why we use that. Way back when color TVs were first introduced, broadcast companies had these technical issues. So what they had to do to make that technology work was to slow down the frame rate by 0.1%. So 0.1% slower than 24 is 23.976. 0.1% slower than 30 frames per second is 29.97. Technology has gotten way, way, way past the point where we would still need to do that. But since those standards were kind of made way back then and all the broadcast companies were like, ah, well, we're already doing this complicated 29.976. We've kind of adapted to this weird frame rate. So generally speaking, I'm going to say 24 frames per second and 30 frames per second, but just just keep in mind whenever I say those, I mean 23.976 and 29.97. And when you're selecting your frame rates in most cameras, it just says, do you want to shoot 24 or 30? And you just put it at 24 and automatically it'll put it to 23.976. Once you start getting into the advanced camera, such as that red, it will give you the option to shoot between 23.976 or actually true 24. But I personally have never shot in those formats because of these NTSC standards. So basically you'll probably Probably never need to do it either. So I wouldn't really worry about that yet unless a client comes to you and says, we need to shoot true 24, which again, has never happened to me ever. Now, if you're like me and live in the States or pretty much anywhere with NTSC standards, you have to decide, are you gonna shoot 24 or 30. Now I shoot 24 as much as I can because I feel like it's the most cinematic. It's not as smooth as 30, but that's what a majority of movies have been filmed on. Because these digital cameras have evolved from film cameras and back then they were just shooting solid 24. So a lot of times we want these digital cinema cameras to look just like those film cameras because those looked fantastic. So if you are looking to get cinematic footage, definitely be shooting 24. So this video is being shot at 24 frames per second. I bring this footage into the computer and I edit it in a 24 frame per second sequence. And then I upload it and publish it as a 24 frame per second. So notice that whole pipeline, that whole workflow, 24, 24, 24. So how about 30 frames per second? It's more frames per second. So it is going to be a bit more smooth. I would show you what 30 frames per second looks like, but I can't because again, I'm editing this video in 24 frames per second. So I could put my camera into 30 frames per second. So then my camera would be shooting 30. But when I bring this into the editing software, it would take that 30 frames per second 
and it would just extract one out of every four frames, I think, to make it 24 frames per second. So it ends up being a jacked up 24 frames per second. And once you start editing a video, you can't switch the frame rate. Every video clip is one frame rate. So I can't have the video be 24 frames per second in some parts and 30 frames per second in some parts. Like one video is gonna be one frame rate. So for me to show you 30 frames per second, I would have to shoot in 30 frames per second, edit in 30 frames per second, and upload in 30 frames per second. So that is why it is very important for you to know what frame rate you're filming at very early on in the process. So when you pick up your camera, you should already know, I'm gonna edit this in this frame rate. So make sure all the cameras that we're using for this video is in that same frame rate. It's not gonna be the worst thing ever if you mix the two frame rates. Like if you put 24 frame per second video into a 30 frame per second video, then it's just gonna duplicate some of the frames to just fill in that space. But on the other hand, if you are a professional filmmaker and you deliver 30 frame per second footage when they ask for 24, you will never get a call back from them again. <laughs> and like I mentioned, 30 frames per second is going to be a bit smoother and it is also a bit more common. Pretty much all video cameras can shoot 30 frames per second, but not all cameras can shoot 24. So 30 is gonna be a tad bit more universal. I definitely recommend checking what all your cameras can shoot in. And if you're not necessarily going for that cinematic look, then going 30 may be a little bit beneficial for you because it is going to be a tad bit smoother, as we mentioned. So a lot of news, reality TV, sports, often they film in 30 frames per second just to give it that extra smoothness. And again, a camera operator for like Channel 4 News isn't necessarily gonna be like, I need this to be cinematic. Let's film this newscast at golden hour. <laughs> By the way, golden hour is right before sunset when the sky and sunlight looks really nice and orange is a great time to shoot. Most of you already knew that, but this is a beginner's course. So I just wanna make sure that I cover everything. So based off that, you should have a general idea of what frame rate you plan on shooting at. And if you decide to go 24 frames per second, then make sure all your cameras can shoot 24. Now there are some people that shoot, edit, and upload 60 frames per second, which I wouldn't recommend. You're really not benefiting that much from having that extra frame per second at going all the way at 60 and that's double the number of frames. So that's double the amount of information it takes to process those frames. And a lot of times, instead of doubling the quality of each frame, they actually reduce each frame in half. If you're trying to fit a certain bandwidth, it's gonna require more light to shoot it, a lot more data to store it. Just, I wouldn't really do it. But just because you don't want to upload all your videos in 60 frames per second, doesn't mean you shouldn't shoot 60 frames per second. I actually set this camera to 60 frames per second all the time. There's your camera's frame rate or your shooting frame rate. And there's also your project frame rate, what you're gonna be editing in. They're two completely separate independent things. Most of the times you're gonna want that to sync up. So this project 24 camera right now is shooting 24. But let's say we get an epic shot of Sam trying to look cool. That was too fast. So let's try to make it slow motion. Notice that now it looks really, really choppy. Why is that? What we did is we took our 24 frames that we recorded in a second and we stretched it out so there's no longer images in between each of these frames. That's why the footage turns out choppy. There's nothing there to look at. So what we need to do is to create more frames to stick in between there when we stretch it out. That way we have a nice full timeline of frames that we can watch through. So the more you wanna slow it down, the further the frames are gonna get stretched apart and you want more and more frames. So the more slow motion you want, the more frames you have to record. So one example, I directed a music video for Pepe Aguilar and we shot at 30 frames per second. And everyone was like, 30 frames? I thought you wanted this to look cinematic. What the F is you thinking? But the reason why we shot that at 30 is because I wanted to slow it down just a little bit. So if you take 30 frames per second footage and slow it down to 80%, just enough to take the edge off. It felt a little less harsh than real time, but it didn't really feel like slow motion. It was just a little bit of like, is that slow motion? One thing to keep in mind with music videos is that the artist does need to lip sync to the song so you can sync it in post. The thing is, if you're gonna shoot slow motion, then you have to counter the lip syncing by speeding up the song. So they actually have to lip sync to a faster version of their song. So really when we're filming, they're just like, blah, 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 
blah, blah. It feels weird, but it looks good when you end up slowing down the song because then their syncing matches with the song. And if your project is 30 frames per second and then you shoot 60 frames per second, there's a little math involved, but then at that point, you could put it to 50% speed. Then you could get into slow shots, more frames per second recorded, the slower you can make it. So 120 frames per second, 240 frames per second. 240 frames per second is 10 times more frames per second than 24, which means you can slow down that footage 10 times and it still looks perfectly smooth. So awesome. Anyways, hopefully that cleared up any sort of questions you might have had about frame rates and why you would shoot 24 frames per second, 30 frames per second, and high frame rates like 60, 120, 240, and beyond. And if you want another three full hours of me explaining stuff about cameras, then go check that link down in the description where I go over everything from recording on your phone to shooting on a cinema camera. Anyways, let's read some comments from a video I recently just posted about the new DJI Osmo Action and comparing it to the GoPro Hero 7 Black. The top comment was from King Cannon. Everybody else rushed out a video. Thanks for sitting on this and finding hiccups in the software. Slow and steady wins the race. Well, <laughs> I appreciate that King Cannon, but let's be real. If DJI were to send me an early version of the camera, I definitely would have rushed because that's like guaranteed views. But yeah, I mean, the DJI Osmo Action still an awesome camera. I just still kind of prefer the Hero 7 Black. Lee Chris prefers the GoPro. I fly FPV drones and that real steady Go quality is unbeatable. Oh man, FPV drones. Those things are kind of crazy. I have one. I actually bought one not too long ago, but I've been too intimidated to hook it up and try to turn it on. I don't know what I'm doing. It's complicated. It's not like a DJI drone where you plug it in and everything makes sense. So this thing, I mean, do I plug it in? Will it explode if I plug it in? I really honestly don't. Oh my God. What was that sound? See, what is happening? This is, this is exactly my point. What did I, I need help. I need some serious help with this. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna unplug it. Okay, before it blows up. Couldn't tell the difference between that and a time bomb where you have to cut the right wire or else it's gonna blow up on you. That's how I feel. That's how much anxiety I have right now. It's NJ says he prefers the DJI Osmo action because of the rock steady stabilization. Also, firmer updates are coming for the Osmo, which might fix some of the bugs you are talking about. And I hope so, because I do really wanna use this thing more. And I do love how it has this front facing display. Like, look at this little thing. It's a perfect little vlog camera. I can't wait to take a traveling. I'm heading to Mexico this summer, so this would be a perfect little companion for that. Anyhow, thanks for sticking around to the end, and also thank you for checking out my course, and whoever buys it and gives me money, I thank you too also, and I'll see you guys later. Peace!